There have been plenty of times that we have said something that, you know, uh, we're not entirely sure of. At least that's by case. Incriminating. <laughs> the word you're looking for is incriminating. <laughs> Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly Show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, NVIDIA marinates Quake 2 on RTX sauce, leaving a bad taste with some, and Google dishes on Stadia. It's good news, everyone, question mark? We'll talk about that in a minute. Today, we learn how to kill Steam. You kill it with kindness. And would you like to play a game? We get the final piece to the jigsaw puzzle. Tech Radar draws conclusions from the Steam Hardware Survey. And just six months shy of 26 years, Sigil is released! You know, if you want some more of that OG Doom goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Ben, joined every week by our now uh, properly refrigerated Canadian podcaster. Hmm, look at him. He's oh, you're a cold one. And no, uh, no, I'm 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 just going through heroin withdrawal. Oh well, okay, a little column A, a little column B, and uh, the slower, more talking. That's Pedro Mateus. Hey, he's Hello. brilliant in Britannia. Uh, together with you at home, watching this live in Shadowrun Dynamic, helping us form Cooking and Voltron. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what's new in your life, organs? Uh, Pedro, I. Really don't have that's fucking much. fascinating. What's up with you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more, more, more adventures in AMD GPU land, uh, fucking around with, uh, 580. Yeah, so, uh, apparently, so, um, appar apparently, uh, HDMI audio under uh, AMD GPU under Fedora is a little borked, uh, because if you try and like use the HDMI for an audio output, everything gets all garbled and distorted in super fast speed. If your if your uh, output is an HDMI port, you swap that over to one of the display ports, and you say like a display port to HDMI cable, everything works fine except that um, like the HDMI 2.0 stuff doesn't the the what whatever condition requires that protocol flag flag to get enabled to allow you to do 4K at 60 mm -hmm. uh, does not happen, so you need an active adapter. So I wouldn't buy an active adapter. <laughs> uh, lo and behold, I don't think. Based on based on what the EDID supports under Linux, the TV will go up to uh, like 120 hertz on uh, 1080p, but will cap out at 30 hertz for uh, for 4096 by 2160 because that's what the resolution of the TV is, not uh, 3840 by 2160. So still fucking around with that, trying to force it to um, trying to force it to run at 60 hertz. At UHD. We'll see how that goes. I'll report back next week. That sounds like an adventure. We were curious uh, about how that would work out. Uh, but it, basically, outside of that, everything's smooth, though, right? Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure the issue is just, like, the display I'm using. Uh, uh, if, if, if this were just, like, a regular-ass monitor, then it would be fine. But because it's, because it's like, a TV, that that's, that's where the problem comes in. Right on, right on. Uh not much to report over here. I uh, did some like basic ordering of like Ethernet cables and SSDs for the Optiplexes, quality of life stuff, nothing exciting to tell you at home. Uh, I got a front case panel with speed holes in it. It's amazing. Mm. Yes, I'm such a nerd that like, okay, that's neat. I like that. And I showed everyone who's like, go away, Vin. Um, <laughs> so, so how does your computer run on meth? Dude, it's awesome. Uh, I do have the thread ripper. I was saying earlier, man, uh, like at idle, you know, just cocking around, like browsing stuff like that. It's sitting around 35 to 38, man, which for 180 watt part, not bad on air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, the horse is not air cooled. Nay. No, it's, 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 it's a little sticky. Um, all, all, all the, all those rays that has been tracing have left it, uh, smearing <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> You, you, you need some vinegar, vinegar to clean it up. It's the Steam Update of the Week. Did it hit all the oh my time? god, no, NVIDIA <laughs> is going under. Uh, not really. Nope. Uh, but uh, yeah, as it appears that uh, Tech Radar has been looking at the Steam hardware surveys, like, we all know that that's a very reliable source of information, but it's the only one we have. Clearly. So uh, Tech Raider decided, you know what, let's look at like how um, the 2060 and the 2070, because they're like the two highest uh, ranked 
RTX cards uh, in the GPU list, how those have been faring over the past couple of months. And you saw that, like, last month, it, they say in the article, it had a significant increase, and the um, the 2060 this month only had a not 0.14% increase, which uh, led Tech Radar to draw the conclusion that uh, that RTX adoption is uh, slowing down a little bit. You, uh, come on, man. I mean, of course, it never really got off the board because they, they had the announcement. I remember watching it along with everyone else at home. Like, oh, okay, ray tracing. And I, I was it tweeting. It just works. Dude, I, the, <laughs> the thing I had to like tweet out, I was like, uh, Jensen, if you have to, and this is generally true with any tech, if you have to point out the thing I need to be paying attention to to see the improvement, it's not an improvement. Um, yeah. Then they hit us with the prices, and I think because the 2060 didn't exist, they were like 2070, 2080, and I think a lot of people, myself included, went Peace Among Worlds, NVIDIA, that ain't happening. Mm -hmm. um, and not until the 2060 came out, which I bought, but I didn't buy it as a video card. I was like, that I can actually get a hold of the Turing NV encoding hardware mm. for under $400. So I'll buy me one of those. So yeah, yeah. I don't, do you think the super thanks for asking uh, update? Is it going to help anything, Jordan? I don't really think so. I, I, th I think maybe it'll result in some cheaper cards. But here's the thing. Everyone's fucking broke now. It, everything is so expensive. Uh, it turns out that's not great for GP sales. I will say, though, for Steam hardware survey, I got three in the past two weeks. One on every computer I've connected to Steam from this location. So... <laughs> Different that, IPs. <laughs> no, I, I, I think, I think maybe they're like they figured out like, oh, you've connected from like four computers in this household. Clearly, you're like a Steam household, and we need to figure out what all the fucking computers are in your house. Okay, am I alone? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Also, also, I, 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 I got, I got a new question in the Steam survey. They ask you uh, if you have the uh, USB dongle plugged plugged in. If you use a USB extender, that was. Uh, mm -hmm. Huh. That's 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 a new one. I grabbed a screen grab of that. It's somewhere. Um. I don't, I, I don't know, though. This is not surprising. Video cards are very expensive now. People don't want to buy them until they see, like, a double-digit performance improvement, which, you know, this generation has not necessarily provided. You're not willing to pay $1,000. I know, right? Yeah. And you, when you can probably still find, like, a 1080 refurb for the same price as a 2060, you're going to get better performance out of that 1080 in most games. Hell, on Linux... Uh, it's all games except for Quake 2 RTX, but we'll get to that. Uh, the If you want to go like full like secondhand instead of refurb, you can even get them cheaper than that. So most people are just going to get that. Mm. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the refresh is the... Uh, uh, maybe I'm not alone when I hear they're going to... You know, the super versions are going to be whatever. And... At the same price, what like the 2070 and 2080 and 2060 is right now, and that's going to knock the price. You know, this is all speculation a hundred dollars less. And it's like, okay, you give me a three hundred dollar 2070, and we're talking. So, I think, yeah, the, the, well, the, that would that would bring it back down to like what you would originally pay for like a 70 series card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, um, yeah, exactly. Is... The everyone's normal complaint, you know, we definitely said. When I picked up the 980, even when you picked up the 980, well, it was a little older by that point, but... I but bought, it was still five, it was 500 bucks. That was right. the top-end card at the time. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> and 500 bucks only gets you a 2070 these days, so... Yeah. Mm. But again, it is oh. faster than the 980. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't take much these days. Anyway, it doesn't <laughs> matter indeed. because greedy, horrible, capitalist pig dogs have killed uh, Steve and Val. I like, mean, so... The I I I think I think that the title kind of buried the lead here, but this this is from the week, and they say how capitalism killed one of the best game studios. I don't Valve Valve makes some good games. I don't think they're necessarily one of the best, but basically they go and say how oh yeah you re remember remember when Valve made it, they remember when Valve made games you guys they they had like a good decade where they were just pumping them out and then they stopped because Steam made too much money and you know companies need to start doing one thing and keep doing that thing for eternity because you're not allowed to involve evolve because otherwise like Nintendo would still be dependent on Hanafuda cards and IBM would still be trying to violate people's human rights. Oh wait. Um, but <laughs> uh, like, yeah, the, the, the core argument here doesn't really make sense. Uh, 
St Val uh, Steam became a very, very prolific marketplace, and so Valve turned their efforts towards that because that made them more money. Yes, that that's kind of that that is the characteristic of capitalism. You do what makes you money because the goal is to make as much money as possible. But we, I I don't I don't, I don't know because like imagine if Steam kept or if Valve kept pumping out games. If if they pumped out too many. We, there would be a quality problem. There, I mean, there's a quality problem now, but no, we, <laughs> we, we, we don't actually consider Valve to be a game developer. They are a purveyor of other people's games. Mm -hmm. They but... pump out games. They don't develop them, but they pump them out. Yeah. That was like definitely, I, I read that. I agree with you. Like the headline has really nothing to do with the article. And it's like, we live in the age of clickbait because it's like, you silly hippie, because that capitalism, that market and all that. And I'm not like, oh, free reign capitalism. That's bad. That's politics type stuff, man. I'm not into economics, but that money's money spigot that they made when they made steam has enabled valve as a company to be a very questionable force for good especially for linux so yes yeah and you know there is an argument to be made that minimum effort and highest profit when you get those two together that's how businesses grow but honestly, I'm very, very glad and will forever be thankful to Valve and our Lord Gaben uh, for the continued Linux support. Most other gaming companies, they don't even acknowledge the Penguin, let alone create a market um, in well, Linux now, land. Now, now, now they have to, but they don't necessarily need to love the Penguin or even acknowledge We'll the get penguin. to that too. <laughs> in, indeed. There's a new... But un until that happens, there's a new version of Proton out. Proton 4.2-6. Oh, yep. It's available. They have um, some more Steam Network API fixes. So if you want to play a hat in time online, you absolutely can. Um, they uh, they updated some F audio bits to give Pedro some uh, false hope about Fallout. And speaking of <laughs> false hope for Pedro, they also have some non-English uh, locale fixes as well. But the thing that stood out to me was... Um, they're like, oh, yeah, DXVK 1.21 has been built via a modern compiler. Good, Valve. I'm glad we're no longer depending on Bloodshed C++ to produce our C binaries. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, but to it, be it, fair, uh, with F Audio 1901, it actually fixed most of the garblies in Fallout 4. 1904 made the rest of them go away. So, yeah, 1906 is great to have. But for Fallout 4 specifically, that's already been fixed. Now, I do appreciate the uh, non-English locale thing because, hell, if you've been watching us long enough, you've uh, heard me rant about that more than once, unfortunately. Hey, 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 Pedro's apartment is a sovereign territory. It is a specific <laughs> non-English locale located within one of the larger English locales. Now, you, you, one, one might think that like Jordan is even remotely making it. Earlier, go back and listen to the pre-pre-super shows and where Pedro is explaining the one laptop he doesn't have a Portuguese keyboard hacked into. Yeah, he puts right stickers there. on the keys. He does. <laughs> this is a real thing. This is a problem. It needs to be broken. Uh, yeah, no. Having to pass LC underscore all equals C to games in 2019, it feels kind of backwards. I mean, you can just put it in your bash RC, but who who no, won't do that? No, and no, anyways, this, this is pretty. It's pretty much a maintenance release. Um, so no, nothing, nothing too crazy in this update. But I'm sure we'll be back with more rampant speculation of new versions of Proton. Sounds great. The I, hey man, shit um, bring. am I am I alone? Like every update with Proton, I'm like, where? Uh, what is it? DXVK9 or whatever the hell, like D9 VK. D9 VK. Yeah. Like, give me some and, of that. Uh, easy anti cheat um, compatibility. Yeah. 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 yeah keep, yeah, keep yeah. dreaming, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Okay, uh, Rocket League's Rocket Cars going full on 80s in its Radical Summer event next week where uh, all item drops will be based on cocaine. Uh, maybe. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. Ghost uh, Napper! Uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters, Knight Riders, the Goonies, and more. So yeah, basically cocaine. Uh, it's pretty interesting. We get a new mode, Jordan. Yeah, volleyball, uh, ap apparently. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a brand new two-on-two -two map. Uh, with low gravity and curvy physics, uh, but now 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 I can suck at a Rocket League mode about the same as I suck in the game that it's actually based off of. Although I I, I will say I thought Drop Shot was supposed to be like their version of volleyball. Apparently, this is the uh, this is the actual volleyball. I'm not I'm not 100 sure. Maybe but question mark. But most most of the stuff comes in this patch comes from like oh look at all the nostalgia cars you can buy because we're a game entirely based on microtransactions. Spike Rush. 
Spiky mm-hmm. bullshit is an official mode now. <laughs> yeah, this, this, yep. this is kind of the fun thing. This is like a mode that we regularly play in the after shows. <laughs> Right, but yeah, no. The, now the beach ball is an actual beach ball, and you can play a uh, beach volleyball. Which I wonder if they're actually going to do like the uh, field separation, where you can't go on the opponent's field and they can't go on your field. You just have to bounce it. Back I and want forth. volleyball with rumble. So you can, <laughs> I want to because I, I want like full contact volleyball. I want a volleyball <laughs> game where you can like take the net off and try to like strangle the other team with it. No, dude. <laughs> I I want night boat. Fucking. <laughs> Night boat. Yeah, man. Uh, well, you'll have to put up with night drones. <laughs> yeah, we're looking forward to it. And hey, I, I for one will take all the Rocket League updates that we can get until that becomes an epic thing and we don't get any. Yeah, steam. and if it wasn't about to become an epic thing, I totally buy that Night Rider car. Just because. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Each to their own, man. Okay. Uh, what? Words. Drone Spectra. Uh, it's, uh, it's a drone racing game, not the one, uh, not one of the two that we already talked about. This is a completely new one, uh, and it's available now. It's not an early access. You can get it for reasonably cheap. It's about, uh, five pounds 79, uh, usual okay. price here, but okay, it's currently I'm, down to three seventy six. I'm getting Superman and 64 flashbacks. Yes. Uh, That's it's because you uh, do the graphics too many seem, seem to be <laughs> yeah, uh, from the N64 era, as in everything is very, very low res and very, very low poly. But it's an, uh, an arcade time attack drone racing. That's got to be the shortest uh, little slug line that they have going on there that I've ever seen. But it is available right now. They claim you only need Linux slash SteamOS and a quad core plus on the recommended. Oh, that's recommended. Uh, <laughs> Do you know how hard in 2019 it is to get a hold of a quad core plus? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, those what, those what, things are like unisharks, man. You just don't run into them. What, I, what I'm concerned about is this is a racing game where you can't race against other humans. Just you can bots. race against Superman. Yeah. It's uh, a race and, against time. Hmm? Like, the fact that we already talked about those other two, and now there's this one as well, it's like, did someone create a base asset uh, thing that they put on the Unity store and the Unreal store, and now people are just doing a Unit Z on that and just releasing that same pack? Oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah. Names? It's, 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 <laughs> it's a well-known uh, Portuguese 3D modeler. He, tried, he put it up on sale, but then it kind of sunk. I don't know. I, I like. I, I, I like the idea that there would be a unit Xeon pack, and it's just a Xeon CPU. Yeah, it's, it's one of those old crappy Xeon CPU. Yeah. They just mail you one. It's one of those things. Hey, the unit Xeon. We, we have more super for you, though. We do. It's not. It's not Dragon Ball Super, though. Although it's kind of similar. Super versus. It is a superhero shoot 'em beat 'em up game where you can blow up a mall. Now I'm getting payday flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, but you, but it reminds me, we, we talked about this game forever ago, ZEQ2, where it was basically um, this game, you basically fly around as a Dragon Ball character and you blow your, your friends up. And this does that with superheroes. Also, you have to pay for it. Also, there's no price listed because it's coming spoon to early access. <laughs> early access, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I mean, could it could it could be fun. I'm curious to see what it's actually going to be priced at. Because there's not a lot of these sorts of games out there. I guess I guess you could basically call it a third person descent. Online but... multiplayer and MMO. That that's aspirational, Ooh. man. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 see. Let's they see do claim see. to have a okay. uh, multi platform uh, multiplayer, so <laughs> elusive, dude. This thing re- recommended a well no, just minimum. FX forty one hundred. I mean it... <laughs> I, I mean, there, I, there you go. I, it, it'll it'll run on a bulldozer that. dual core. Those things exist. <laughs> yeah. That's all I know about them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And they didn't perform very well. But yeah, it's uh, six degrees of freedom with humanoid looking characters that are not Dragon Ball characters. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. <laughs> needs, need, needs more Ghost Nappa. But it, it, it's time. It's time, you guys. It's, oh it's what you've all been waiting God. for. Yeah. Mm, put it all <laughs> over my face, chest, and neck, and back, and everywhere else. Quick to RTX. Only mm, two months late. So, yeah, we were talking earlier. Like, hey, man, how are they even going to deliver? Oh, shit, we're putting it on Steam. And I was like, well, f- all right, touche. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> one, one, one click install, man. Yeah. Yep. Lightspeed Studios, publisher NVIDIA. We saw this. It clocks in at the price of free. However, 
that's just for the demo business. And this is the uh, fully ray traced or path traced or whatever. I know there's going to be some nerd fight on that. One of them's correct. Just pick one. And uh, <laughs> if you have uh, Quake 2 on Steam or if you just have Quake 2, the base pack, whatever, when you launch it, it's like, yo, you got the full game? You're like, yo, I do. And it imports it so you can play it. And fortunately, my video encoder happens to be able to play video games. Uh, and it has like 0.5 tensor core on it or whatever that is. I think it has like eight. It's like the minimum. <laughs> it, 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 it's got it's got about tree fitting. Let, let's be real. This is like the second and probably last time that, that hardware will ever be used on that card, man. Um, I tried it. it. It was a thing. It legit got uh, 60 FERPs at 720. I was like, ha, huh. cranked it up to 1080p and... That's a, I was, I was definitely living that low to mid 40 lifestyle fam. Um, now that that's not too bad, man. You know, I mean, that's that, on that's medium. Not... If I, if I cut everything on high at 1080p, definitely a 30, like that's best it can do for you. D at dirty, dirty, 30, dirty, 30. <laughs> so, uh, however, one thing we were curious about now, this is windows and, Linux, no Mac love whatsoever, but we were definitely, it requires a Vulcan, which is good to see that mm -hmm. being used. How, how, do, how did it work on, let, let's start on the low end, a 1080. Uh, welcome to 2019 where a 1080 is the low end. Yeah. Best I could do at 720p with the medium settings, uh, was 20 FERPs. Yeah. That's 20 two zero, And <laughs> Bumping it, just a resolution, just putting that at 1080p, it cut the FERPs down to half. I was getting 10. That was as high as it would go. 10 FERPs. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I was talking about this in the pre-pre super shows, but on the 1080 Ti, you know, get get that weak shit out of here, Pedro. You gotta, Go you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta you gotta you gotta step aside for the for the big boys. Yeah, uh, UHD, you get four whole frames a second. Great. <laughs> Um, 1080p, I, you get 14 frames a second. I didn't even bother trying to <laughs> cut it to 720p because it would just look, it would defeat the purpose of this entire exercise. RTX on, baby. Woo -hoo! We. <laughs> Woo. It, it looks neat. Um, uh, at 11 or 12 minutes in, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Nostalgic grab that. I uninstalled it. Yep. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh 20 fps it's not smooth i'm sorry no i'm out In <laughs> literally the 2080 ti the 1200 video card can get 90 at 1080p i'm sorry don't you mean the 1200 video encoder eh, no that's a video card at that price that, 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 it that is the single most powerful single gpu I, I video card say, if i'm dropping 1200 right i better be able to play video games on top yeah better, except better for like a titan v Better yeah, make me some tacos. All right. Yeah, but but yeah, re really the only reason anyone ever installed this was to see. Hey, does it run? How <laughs> badly does it run? <laughs> it yeah. runs badly. Coming up next, Google is coming to take all of our games. They're coming They're going to, take to steal me them from you. And my games. There have been plenty of times that we have said something that, you know, uh, we're not entirely sure of, at least that's by case. Incriminating, the word you're looking for is incriminating. <laughs> I have certainly said many incriminating things on this very show, especially during the little breaks that we take in between segments. Those but never hey, happen. Don't go back and watch the unmet versions. <laughs> if you'd like to have access to those uh, incriminating bits in no. between segments, there's a way you can do it, and that's by becoming one of our lovely, lovely supporters I on thought you were going to say it's, develop it's, it's, an attention it's, it's, span. It's, it's, <sighs> It's revel it's revolutionary, really. You can pay to blackmail us. You can do Pretty that much. by heading on a, you can do that by heading on over to patreon.com or I guess linuxgamecast.com. Go hover hover over that support no, button. No, don't do it. No, there, it, 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 it won't take you to maybe our Patreon page or oh, our no. our Oh no, we're 118 Monster. of you are giving us 282 bucks a week to produce content for you guys hey everyone i made a uh, little thing to satisfy some curiosity and some questions uh for patreons it's uh time locked it'll come out for everyone so it's not it's just an early release uh 
how I make Linux Gamecasts weekly every week. And this is the video version. There's going to be some audio versions to follow, but as you were saying. Yes, uh, you, you also get some other cool stuff by becoming a Patreon, like ask, access to the Discord channel, access to the show notes. You can watch the show congeal like a greasy, greasy pizza ball. <laughs> Yeah, you 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 can watch you can watch the pizza bagel being made. Uh, you can also uh, RSVP to game streams. Uh, I do multiplayer games on Thursday. Then sometimes does some uh, trivia night stuff on Friday. You can get yourself an invite to that and have a good old time hanging out with your best friends. Linux Gamecast Weekly. We also got a store you can buy clothes from to cover your shame. <laughs> Please do not rely on us for your clothing. <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we need pants. We, we don't, we don't sell, do that, we, we need we, pants. We, we, we don't sell underwear yet. It's, that's, that's, <laughs> yet. That's, the, that's the linchpin to our strategy. We need, we need LGC boxers. But yeah, you can, you can buy yourself a Hello shirt. Uh, you can put my face on your body. Weekly, daily Wednesdays. Declare yourself a Francophile. We still got, uh, we still got uh, chair shirts. Or, not yet. Uh, not yet? All right. Those rotate well, in. They're seasonal. Frank Mark Three just came back. Hot All right. Hotness. We got the LWDW. If that's your thing, we got Hello stickers, sweatshirts, just in time for July. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we 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 got we got another one of those stores, don't we? On uh, on Amazon.com. What? Oh yeah, we we got a thing on Amazon. If you want to go check out, like, it's not really a store. It's just like a list of everything that we have in the studio that we use, that we've tested, and we can say, hey, we actually own this. It works with Linux. We haven't run any problems. And just like other stuff that would just work with Linux, but like audio stuff, you're like, hey, how's this thing do the thing? And oh, there's there it is. Page it's an unofficial been, Linux compatibility list. Yeah, it's something that we've been <laughs> meaning to do, man. Like, I was going to call it the shit that works with Linux, and Amazon's like, no, you can't use shit. I was like, fuck. Um, <laughs> we, 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 got, we, got what, we got one more thing we got to shell for. What? That's, appara- that, that's apparently Twitch is giving us shirts too. Oh, yeah. We qualified for like the Teespring thing. <laughs> So we're, we're straight up, if you're watching us on Twitch, we're straight up trying to shill our wares, like right under the video. That's a thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm irresponsible right. enough to activate that. Anyway, Google's got a thing that's really important. Yeah, if, if after, after you're done giving us money, you can give Google some money. Google Stadia, <laughs> check this out. 130 wet stinky smothering caches up front, $10 a month, November launch, free tier launches in 2020. But both require a la carte game purchases. Look at the controller and the eye patch. I'm going to wear it as an eye patch to make things harder. Chrome, chrome, chrome patch. The chrome patch. It's the chrome oh. patch ultra. <laughs> you know, ultimately, the controller doesn't look horrible? Question it, mark. It looks like a very generic game controller. Yeah, yeah but I got to say, like, out of the box, like $129. I mean, if you're walking into that up front and plus at 10 bucks, uh, I'm on top. Now he's like, well, it comes with games. No, it doesn't. Uh, oh, you, you still got to buy games, man. Game. You got to pay that monthly <laughs> fee to, like, rent the server. It's going to be tough sell, Brad. Indeed. Um, yeah, they, they, are, they are doing that thing, though, where if you get, like, the pro membership, they're doing the PSN thing where you get free games for from the service that you're paying to access. So that's that that's a thing. Um but yeah, uh, if you get the if you are also paying 130 bucks for the uh, thing, you get the controller, you get a Chromecast, uh, and you get a copy of Destiny 2, uh, which is also going to be available on Steam. And because this is going to be a native Linux version running on Stadia, we're get, we're totally going to get like a, a a native Linux version of Destiny 2, right? Yeah, yeah. No, not really. No. Ethan actually had a really <laughs> good take on this. Yeah, um, <laughs> posted posted it on Twitter. Where he's basically like, yeah, what, this is a brand new drinking game of let's see how many games have um uh, have a Stadia release, but still insist on using DirectX 11 for their PC release. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Fun. Well, you got to appreciate that, like going through the effort of giving anything over to Vulcan onto Linux, and they're like, "Yeah, oh no, you, you can already see that happening because we know that Stadia is going is going to feature Destiny Two, and if you go to the Steam page for Destiny Two, it's Windows only, and it's running DirectX Eleven. So, motherfucker, <laughs> seriously, motherfucker, come it's, on, <laughs> it's perfectly balanced, like all things should be. Huh? <laughs> Well, one way or another, I m- might now finally actually get the chance to play Destiny, so that's cool, I guess. I, I, would, yeah. I, I would be more enticed by a copy of, like, Destiny's Child. <laughs> uh, I, I was, was, was going to start, start, start doing all the single ladies, but that's just regular Beyonce. I don't know. But yeah, uh, the, 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 there, there are some... Uh, 
Oh, all right. I was gonna, I was just gonna say that they got they got some they got some interesting games for launch on Stadia. Uh, Doom, Doom Eternal, uh, Rage, Metro Exodus, Thumper, Baldur's Gate Three, which got announced from Larian. Yeah, we're not getting a Linux version of that either. High Divinity Original Sin Two. I'm still waiting on that. Um, appara- apparently, uh, apparently, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is gonna get a Linux port, but not not Ooh. not for not for Linux. Just, yeah. just for Stadia. <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's, been some, there's been some movement on the Linux depots from Feral, so hopefully we'll see that before the Stadia version. One thing I want to see. I watched the announcement, and I was like, oh, God, this is cringy, but all right, whatever. I'm like, it's going to be great. Everything's magical. I was like, show me this working on, like, an oversubscribed cable node in suburbia at, like, mm-hmm. 5 p.m. Yeah. during the week mm-hmm. with an FPS. Yeah, then maybe prime I'll, time. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of that, I'm not even going to give you a curiosity fuck, Stadia. It's not. Nah. I got. I got. Yeah. I got the internet connection to do it, so I. I might just at a. I might. I might take that bullet for you. But you know, you, you statistically, I mean, you shouldn't have the lowest latency with your fiber. Yeah. So. yeah. But then again, difficulty yeah. Canadian fiber. <laughs> difficulty in Canada, right? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Apparently, apparently it is launching in Canada though so we'll, we'll see how yeah, the UK Canada a yep. uh, couple other places in Europe not in Portugal I mean, nope not Portugal not Spain I think it's France Denmark and a couple of others mm. I think yeah everyone but, in yeah, Australia Portugal is like, and Spain you know what? are we didn't even once look, again mate. getting the shaft <laughs> so you, 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 have, you have a choice now you can pay a thousand dollars for a monitor stand or you can pay a thousand dollars for the smach Mm. <laughs> yeah right uh so it's the smach z or smach z or however you want to call it you know the the steam boy as it was originally called i'm gonna be uh, honest i genuinely believe it can play this war of mine uh yeah no oh, the, the pro- game probably plays so on integrated phone. intel graphics so yeah that's fine but uh it's coming and they have a prototype working with a 1080p uh panel and it's got the AMD Ryzen embedded V1605B, which has Vega graphics. Which That's is a bit of a swing, Vega Brad. Three. Two to seven hours. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many double A's will it eat through? In an I, I, I'm just saying it's got seven hours of standby. That's all I'm reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it it's supposedly, supposedly, this comes from Lily Pudding, and it will be coming out at the end of the year. And I'll believe that when I see it. But uh, they also have a little bit of information on the prices, mostly because uh, Smack themselves are still taking pre orders. So if you want the baseline 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, no camera, you can get that for six hundred and twenty nine dollars. Uh, if you want the Smack Z Pro with eight gigs of RAM, one hundred and twenty eight gigs of storage, and five megapixel camera, you could get uh, could get that for eight hundred and nine. And the Ultra for sixteen gigs of RAM, two hundred and fifty six gigs of storage, and the camera you get for nine hundred and eighty nine dollars. Yeah, give me the monitor stand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope that's not the retail price because if it is, that is going to fail worse uh, than the whole development development rigmarole that we've covered thus far. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, so, so here, here, here's hard mode. Here's hard mode. Do you think that the smack will outsell the total number of Steam machines? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Like the total number of Steam machines of all the ones that were there? Or, no. uh, wait, hang on. Uh, you got to clarify. Made or sold? Sold. Yes. Okay. Now, theoretically, theoretically, if this ever becomes a real product, because <laughs> like a lot of you, this is, this is soap opera. This is my telenovela at this point. I, I have no involvement. Like if it gets made, it gets made. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I just want to see like if how how the story comes to an end, you know, you know, Katana, the class action suit. Well, I basically that, that'll never happen. But <laughs> you know, I, I genuinely think like I want to see how long they can keep this in development hell uh, before like the company as whole just poof, disappears. And that's the end of it. Katana was like he thinks uh, he wrote in our show notes. You get access to our show notes as Patreon, and you can tell us we're wrong before we even uh, say anything. That it's underwhelming at a ridiculous price, only to pull. 
what? Only to pull out as a non-viable thing, go bankrupt. Yeah, they're going to go poof, but I don't think they're going to bother with a bankruptcy. Then again, they might deliver it because they said, hey, we have a production facility together. And it was like two tables in an empty warehouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where they showed some 3D printed parts that had been badly sanded over. Yeah. (laughs) Well, then again, uh... on that video, I believe that was actually running because a lot of those games look really choppy. Yeah, yeah, Overwatch being the glaring example. It's like, that wasn't even hitting 15 FERPs. That was bad. <laughs> and now, if you talk I, I, to I, the design, man, I used to think my Atari Lynx was ridiculous. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be necessarily comfortable to hold, given that footage there. Uh, but I, what I, what I want to know is, whoever fucking owns Atari right now, do you think they're going to try and grab this after it fails and market it as the Lynx 2? No, dude. What will happen is like a dental company will get a hold to it to go along along next to their uh, Jaguar like uh, teeth cleaner. Yes, <laughs> that they bought the molds too because that, that's definitely a thing. I want it to be real. Basically, here's what I want: I want everyone who's backed it like six years ago to get a product, and that's what I want. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I give zero fucks. You know. Indeed. All right. Indeed. Doom. So. Uh, you think six years is a long time to wait? Try 26. And uh, yeah, well, John Romero has finally put out uh, the fifth episode for the original Doom, Sigil. And is he going to make can... us our bitch? Uh, make, him, uh, make us his bitch? Can you believe this? They're tr- <laughs> trying to sell t-shirts. <laughs> yes, yes, they it's are. It's ridiculous. <laughs> trying to sell t-shirts. And uh, you can buy the Sigil and Buckethead edition for uh, six euros and 66 cents. Uh, which comes with, well, the game itself is free. You could just go to the website, download the WAD, uh, actually the two WADs. Uh, one is the compat version that will run uh, like as soon as you finish episode four of the original Doom. It'll start Sigil and you get the standalone version where you can just start it on its own and it'll just start from there. Mega uh, WAD. It's, yeah. But you can get the special edition versions which come with the shirts and the things and it's it's Doom. It's OG Doom. I hadn't I'd never started OG Doom in a UHD monitor. I have now. It still plays just as good as I remember back in the day, and it still looks the same. Well, you can huh. make it look better with GZ Doom. Okay, but- so I have seen like <laughs> Everyone is like, yo, it's so dark. I can't see anything. But I've seen some recordings. Did people just like jack up the gamma on it? Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a couple of settings because by default, uh, GZ Doom is set to like the original campaigns, which were lighter. So it makes them slightly darker. Mm. And with Sigil, everything is just a little bit darker. So yeah, people were running into issues that everything was way too dark. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, was... I, 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 go ahead. Go, go. No, I was just going to say, I do wonder if John Romero had to pay the Satanic Temple for Baphomet's likeness. <laughs> I know Sabrina. I know some, actually Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the, the new series, uh, gotten some legal heat because they used Baphomet's likeness with the, the Satanic Temple. Well, that was definitely set. a thing. I remember, Pedro, you might be of the vintage. That was, that was like OG PC cheat codes, Gamma. Yeah, so like a lot of games back in the day, you're like, oh man, yeah, I, I felt on, like I was cheating. You know, the Blair Witch it, games, just crank it up on, so you can see. On, on on the brick Game Boy, they had a little gamma knob. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there 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 are games like, oh yeah, you need to get the torch. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the thing. All right, Dolphin Progress 2019. Yeah, um, they these these guys, they're they're crazy. They went and wrote an entire virtual GPU on Vulcan, and they're at it again. Uh, they have a progress report just to let us know what's going on with the Dolphin project. And so far, the focus uh, for May has been peripheral support. Uh, the Drawsum tablet, aka the device that killed the Wii. This, this, um, you know, any other company, I've been like bullshit. This this is Think Geek, April Fools. And you're like Nintendo. I was like, yep, that's legit. Indeed, there's like a drum. They have they have stereoscopic 3D support um, coming in because apparently they could, they just figured out how to do it a while ago. Um, yeah, and the, the it's it's always interesting to read them like what the, what sort of technical challenges they need to overcome to like get specific things to work. Uh, like unfucking USB. The we, we we briefly talked about it the last progress update they made. Uh, there and they they continued that story uh, in this update. And there's there, there's there's a great little line in here. Where it's like, well, somehow Linux managed to work with these devices. We found out that Dolphin was using the wrong buffer sizes for these USB vents. 
How this didn't cause more problems, we don't know, but upon fixing it, nothing really improved. So, how yeah. does this, why does this work on Linux? I don't fucking know. We fixed it, but it didn't improve I, anything. I was unaware this thing could generate nightmares. Now I really want one. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there, there's, there's some creepy body cam stuff for, uh, for <laughs> the Wii. So, um, w w could it do the same, like, thing with, you know what I'm thinking about? Yes. Uh, yes, it can. Okay. <laughs> Just check. No, um, really yeah. one. Uh, there was also a, a really weird bug in Star Wars Fox Assault that they were able to fix once they realized the GameCube and Wii will discard certain number of bits from their command buffer commands, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, development work continues. They're still supporting Linux. They're still using Vulkan and OpenGL, which is great. Yep. And they're they're chugging along. That's what it is. I'm down with it. Maybe not as breakneck as the PlayStation 3 lot, but progress mm -hmm. nonetheless. I, yeah, I, I, I think PCS3 I think is I, making some progress. <laughs> I'm still waiting I, on Bayonetta. That's why I'm like, mm, I want to play Bayonetta too, and I don't want to buy the hardware. Yeah, I I, th <laughs> I think with uh, with Dolphin though, um, it it's it's more stable now. Now now they're just like working on trying to get things as compatible as possible and trying to like make it the perfect emulator. They have most stuff working so far. So our mm. our PCS3 is still in that phase where like we still need to actually get all the games to launch. So. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, can I ask you a question? Like serious question? Yeah, sure, why not? Who is your favorite horror movie puppet? My favorite horror movie puppet? Probably Gizmo. Okay, your favorite horror movie puppet that's primary mode of transportation is a tricycle. Gizmo. Next door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh yeah, jigs jigsaw puzzles, man. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, um, Puzzle Massive. Uh, it's available on GitHub. You can build it and run it, or there's a server publicly available. What it does is it will ingest an image and turn it into a jigsaw puzzle that you and your friends can solve. Because jigsaw puzzles, they're a thing. Do they count as games? I don't know. But it, 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 it will, it'll do it. Um, you can, you can play jigsaw puzzles. I, I, I don't know, when was, when was the last time any of you assembled a jigsaw puzzle? Because it would have it, literally decades for me. Literally decades. You know those 3D ones where you could build, like, famous monuments? Lego? Uh, I, I built the... No, 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 not Lego. The, like, the 3D puzzles, I think that's what they were called. Uh, it, I built the Notre Dame in one of those, but yeah, that was, like, 20 years ago. <laughs> Leave it alone, Jordan. Um, <laughs> all right, the... all right. I, I it, it's an interesting idea. I mean, because one of the things about jigsaw uh, puzzles was, or I guess still is, is, like getting a group of people together and like we have fuck all to do and Dr drink and drink wine and solve right. puzzles. Yeah, let's just do this thousand piece and put it together. Now you can do it online, further removing you from unessential human contact. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, and but you can do it with multiplayer, so you can have MMO, people actively fucking with you. It, it's, it's better than most <laughs> multiplayer games on Steam in the fact that it does have online multiplayer. I'll give it that. It does. Can you imagine? You're like, so what do you do? It's like, yeah, I'm a, on a multimedia MMO uh, jigsaw griefer. <laughs> I just go and steal jigsaw puzzle pieces from other people's tables. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that'd be. I I I don't know. I hate I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put that on my resume now. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's great. <laughs> I, don't, I I failed to see why why this would be a thing, but eh, they can jigsaws. go dumber, man. I mean, this is actually a thing, though. It's a product, and you can check it out. It's open source, and you can put it in your face, man. You can play play puzzles with grandma, man. You can. It's like, hey, Grandma, here's a tablet. Now play a jigsaw puzzle on it. What? <laughs> I can't feel my arms. All right, coming up next, we're, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I found out it's not cat people that we got to save from vampires. It's fox people, and I'm not sure if that's any better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This is where the accused game must survive trial by Fedorf, Solus, and also Fedorf. Um, <laughs> and then, and only then, can the question be asked. Do you have fun? This, day, this, this date, in the year of our Lord, 20... 20... 19, <laughs> whatever. Um, <laughs> in the He's year 25... Jesus. In the year 2525, if... 
cat people are still alive. We're taking a look at Vampire's Cold Soul, developed by Dev Espresso Games on Unity. You can pick it up for about 25 bucks. Why is it? Vampire's Cold Soul is a roguelike fantasy adventure game set amidst a frozen landscape. Plan your expeditions underground and journey to the cursed city surface where your team of heroes wield unique powers, avoid dangerous traps, brave strange encounters, and survive deadly combat. Uh, these guys sent us keys, so thanks a lot. We passed the review embargo, and now we're here to throw chairs at their game. Ben, how did it work on Fedorf? Fedorf, man. Fedorf 30. It's a piece of kit. It's a thing. Uh, over here on the 1950X, 32 gig of RAM. Uh, again, on the Fedorf, uh, not much to report. 2060 powered. All that fun stuff. Uh, no issues. I mean, it launched. Technically, it's reasonably competent. Uh, solid 60 at 2160, which you would expect. I mean, let's be honest here. Graphics. If, if you like full screen, 2160p. If you have a UHD monitor, because you fucking better, that's the only thing uh, it's going to give you is whatever your max resolution is of full screen. And if you kick it down to windowed, uh, the best it can do, 1080p. That's all it's going to do. You want to like do like 1440 windowed? Fuck you. Not going to happen. Um, one thing I will say, one thing I get a chair for, is it's got hard-coded PS4 buttons in it, Brad, and I don't like that because I'm a PS4 controller, and it's 20 fucking 19. So... Outside of that, I didn't have an issue with it. So I'll give it a solid three on uh, Makes With Working. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 3064 bit on the uh, FX8150 with the RX580. You hipster. I know. It's, 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 <laughs> games don't play the same on this newfangled Ryzen hardware. It misses a lot of the warmth and the pops and the crackles <laughs> that you that get that from. Fucking <laughs> sound card, man. Right. Um, yeah, but... Uh, on, on the on the TV box, uh, no problems. It launches, holds sixty at the resolution that it picks, which is max. Um, graphics, yeah. There's there's a lot of not quite animu, but animu inspired animu, and controls. I didn't get. Uh, I I was uh, playing it on the TV box with the Steam controller, and I got correct button prompts. So I'm not quite sure what happened on Ven's system, but apparently that's a thing. Uh, I will give it four chairs. Cause why not? Yeah. And over here, it uh, launched with no issues whatsoever. It, as far as I could tell, it seems to be locked at 60 because at uh, 1080 or 3840 by 2160, that, that's what it did. Uh, the graphics, yeah, as you get them proto-anime characters, but they're good looking. And, you know, it, the sound is great. Could use a little bit more voice acting, but... I like that guy. I like that guy's facial expression. He looks like he's yeah. holding, it looks like he's holding in a shark. And uh, the controls, yeah, there there was no rebinding of keys whatsoever, but they seem to have covered all the bases because was and the arrow keys all work, as well as the uh, dual shock. So as far as I'm concerned, it gets a full clean bill of health for the uh, the mix with the working four chairs. All right, well, there you go. It sort of kind of works. Yeah, for, sometimes. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's got a couple issues, but nothing game breaking, nothing game stopping. Absolutely not. But did you have fun, Ben? Whole different story. Whole different story. <laughs> However, I don't feel like I'm necessarily alone. This, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a visual novel with a halfway functional game kind of bolted onto it. I mean, unfortunately, that game is Darkest Dungeon SE, short bus edition, not special. To the game's credit, I mean, it's dead simple compared to Darkest Dungeon. No character progression outside of, the, like, the one piece of equipment you can get. You get two skills, no healing. But if you like furries and war heals, because your main character has, like, steel-plated heals, kind of hot, uh, it might be worth a look. Hell, I mean, if you like visual novels with a dash of RNG because fuck you, that's why, again, might be worth a look. The art get that sound department, bang up job. Excellent work there. And for the most part, as we just re discussed, the technical bits, pretty good. The game, on the other hand, well, I'm going to put it like this. Uh, it does an excellent job demonstrating why I find Darkest Dungeons boring. All the advanced tactics and spreadsheet juggling, they just simply don't exist in this game. It's poop, which turn, poop again, die, repeat. Uh, at least there was an attempt at a story, I'll give it that. Unlike uh, Darkest Dungeons, it's like, hey, man, start, go, go explore some caves and shit. Uh, I don't hate it. It's one of the better interactive visual novels I've played. But kind of calling it a full-fledged game is kind of like calling us game journalists. It, it's not technically true. 
true. But, I mean, that's about 20 bucks, and it's extremely well done. So if you want a nerfed down version of Darkest Dungeon, and you like the backstory and everything that's going on with it, eh, check it out. But I'll, I'll give it to yeah, the, 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 this segment is going to be filled with a lot of comparisons to Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> and it's my, the my, Darkest Dungeons of. <laughs> the, the, this is the Darkest Dungeons of game review. Um, and, and anyways, I can, I, can, I can definitely say that after two hours, without a shadow of a doubt, I like Darkest Dungeon better because it punished me. It gave me something to actually do with, with an actual compelling reward loop and a reason to keep on playing. Vembrace is interesting because it attempts to sort of blend the darkest dungeon dungeon crawling mechanics with uh, the FTL map mechanics via a final fantasy style overworld. And is that on why paper, the dungeons are fuck all complex and weird? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because, because um, like, like FTL, you have to go through a bunch of these various challenges uh, to get to the final stage. And that's, that's the actual boss as opposed to darkest dungeon where you just, uh, do mission after mission after mission after mission and deal with the aftermath therein. Here, you are constantly fighting the aftermath. You have to cra- you have to f- go through levels, grind stuff, track down healing items so that you can keep your heals up, you can keep your hit points up. Um, a lot of the times, um, you're, you're, there's there's like a FTL style countdown mechanic where you have to finish what you're doing in a certain amount of time or else you just get attacked nonstop. And God help you if you fucking do, because at least in FTL you can fight your way out of it or at least stall your way out of it. No, mm-hmm. here if you if you enter fucking Spooky Town, if 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 it's Spook o'clock, then you're fucked. You have to go back to town and start again because otherwise the escape is escape route is cut off to you. The map mechanic in the dungeon is also kind of weird because. It's inaccurate. Sometimes it lies to you, and sometimes it lies to you when you think you're right at the end, and then it's spooky time, and then you realize, fuck, I have to abandon this and go back to town because I fucked myself over. Um, and there's not really much of a reward loop. There's no, uh, there's no positioning mechanics. There's no... A lot of the more compelling stuff out of Darkest Dungeon, that really speaks to me as, as someone who likes these sorts, sorts of games. Um, the, it, it will be brought up that this game presents some kind of narrative. I don't think necessarily that's a strength. I think the narrative <laughs> is definitely there. Uh, I find the characters incredibly boring and kind of bland, and I don't, I haven't really gravitated towards any of them. What I liked about Darkest Dungeon and like any sort of Nuzlocke game, sort of like um, XCOM, is the emergent narrative that occurs where you get attached to your little group of dudes because you've put your blood, sweat, and tears into them. They've 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 survived stuff. They've beaten the odds. Here, that's it's not really that. You're stuck with your group until you get to the end of the until you get to the end of the um, whatever mission you're on, and then maybe then you can buy a perk or two. And it's not that compelling a reward loop in comparison with games that do it better like FTL or uh, Darkest Dungeon. It's a little too it's a little too dumbed down, and I think it suffers for it because it loses a lot of the richness in exchange for like this busted ass visual novel narrative that isn't really compelling. I'll say it's like on par with the uh, Fel Seal Arbiter's Mark storyline, and that is not very good. Um, <laughs> but like was mentioned before, the art direction the art direction is fantastic. The sound design is very good. Um, it's missing it's missing the great Darkest Dungeon narrator who just makes you feel like shit or alternatively alternatingly fantastic depending on how you're doing. Get a picket brain for a second. What's what's up? So, baby? what do you think about like one thing I noticed? It, I don't know why it bothered me, but unlike Darkest Dungeon, I don't like the way the camera only like jumps from left to right instead of like showing you the entire. Yeah, that, 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 that was the other thing too. Like in Darkest Dungeon, you can also run in a situation where if you get ambushed, your your party order is reversed, and you have to deal with that. Like that doesn't exist in this game, which is another. I, I understand why they did it. Again, it's to like simplify the Darkest Dungeon mechanics, but it does it in a way that. Most of the combat is just you spam A, right? There, you, you have two abilities. You have the primary attack, and then you have sort of like the recharge attack. Um, and really, you're just spamming you're spamming A until you can spam X, and then you go back to spamming A. And there's not really much of a strategy there aside from picking your targets. Um, yeah, it, 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 in, 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 its, in its quest to be a more accessible version of Darkest Dungeon, I think it failed to recreate the thing that made it so fun in the first place. Um, It's competently done, but I'll give it two chairs. It's the best I can do, Brad. Yeah, much like Darkest Dungeon, this is, or was, a hard game. 
unlike Darkest Dungeon, there is an actual overarching uh, plot uh, and proper main character, as it were. You have uh, Lyric there, she's the the one who sort of kickstarts the, the whole thing by breaking into the city that's covered in a wall of ice, and she goes in and everyone's like, oh, but everyone dies if you touch that. Well, not me, because I am main character, and I am Deus Ex main character. So, yeah. She, she, uh, she's Adam Jensen? She never asked for basically. this? Basically. No, dude, she shows up with the of glove. Yeah, she totally didn't ask for this because she just found, like, a Van Brace in her late father's old possessions and she put it on and then she couldn't take it out. So she's stuck with it. But I, I remember that episode of Stargate. Yeah, the emphasis on this particular uh, game is very much on the story. And like Jordan said, it's not the story that you create for yourself, it's not the player-driven narrative, it is very much the plot. The plot that was there from when the developers created it. So much so that the original patch, actually, like, the very first patch after the game came out, uh, made the game considerably easier. Uh, because if you saw me play it on stream, that was before the first patch, and I was getting, you know, like, the spooky o'clock was all the goddamn time because was, you immediately bad. hit it. I was legitimately wondering about that because I remember reading the reviews and I, I played it earlier this week and I didn't get the time to put into it until I got back to the house today. I'm like, this is fucking easy as balls, man. It's boringly yeah. easy. <laughs> because yeah. it was a hard game. Now now it's just a game that eh, it's got some elements that you may not be as familiar with unless you've played a lot of Darkest Dungeon. Uh, it, at which it, point it, that's, you'll... That's, 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 that's the thing, though. Is it hard, though, or is it just poorly balanced? And then no, expects the, you to deal with the poor balance and it, say, oh, it's not. It's hard. That's what I'm saying right now. It's not. It's not hard anymore because they made it easier so that people could actually experience the story because clearly that's where the emphasis here is. Uh, they want to tell a story and they wanted to make like obstacles for the player because, you know, that's, you know, games. Uh, you need to have obstacles so you can enjoy the story more because you feel like you work for it. But. Yeah, clearly here they realize that, oh, maybe the game is a little bit too hard for people to experience the story that we want to tell. I so they know. made it I, I'm kind of very much easier. I'm watching you try to make this game a spreadsheet simulator. And it's like, now nah, it's not there, man. That, you know, no. There's no real point when you think about it. it. It's just not. <laughs> and yeah. we already, you know, we already have Darkest Dungeon. And chances are, if you like the style of combat and the mechanics of, like, you know, the dungeon delving you're going to like Darkest Dungeon a hell of a lot more. But as it is, I'd say it's in the sweet spot of being, like, a game in reasonably hard, although no, nowhere near as hard as Darkest Dungeon or as it originally was, but it still is able to tell the story. Uh, it's certainly worth your time, if you like this kind of game, obviously, but the price... Well, in my opinion, it's somewhat justified by having someone actually draw everything that you see on screen because that's all hand-drawn. But a bit more voice acting wouldn't have gone amiss because I hear a lot uh, of, <gasps> we must be a, careful. A bit more? We got like what? an actual actress at the beginning of the game and then just ball Yeah, this is one of the downsides. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, you, pro tip, go all in or for not because I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm going to be able to... No, no, I got to read. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so for me, it gets three chairs because it needs a little bit more, but it is certainly an enjoyable game as far as I'm concerned. Well, All right, well, I want to say my final thought. I, I'm going to say definitively, this is the Dark Souls of visual novels, period. <laughs> I, th I, I thought that was Doki Doki Literature Club, but okay. You're, um, you're, okay, man, my final going. thoughts, get a dwarf. Seriously, just hire a dwarf. They will... Avoid all the frickin' traps. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, coming up next, I'm done pressing A and hoping that RNG favors me. Coming up next, we talk about Yolg. Coming up next, eight mail. All right. And we arrive at the darkest test of dungeons of Linux Gamecast. Yes, it's the hate mail. It's where we lock up all the comments that we get during the week, and then we go around cell by cell, week after week, trying to figure out which ones are just... 
passable enough to uh, present to you right here, right now. If you'd like to See, ladies uh, and gentlemen, submit. this is what's called technically finishing the race. He's trying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, 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 like, are, are, are you in for, like, a prison analogy or, like, a slave plantation metaphor? I'm not clear on this. Well, I didn't mention slaves at any point, so, uh, you, yeah, you, if you you, 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 you were painting a very clear image there, Pedro. <laughs> if you would like to submit your own, um, uh, comments, questions, hints, thoughts, allegations, things better left unsaid, you can go to ladiesgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, Fill out the forum, make sure LGC Weekly is the show you're submitting your hate mail to, and we'll be, um, I guess, thrilled. That's probably a sh- too strong a word, but we'll feature it right here, right now. And this week, well, I guess Zoe uh, came out of the gate swing and it's like, hello! Uh, you mentioned came out of, it you mean came out of the cell. Yes. <laughs> uh, cell, you the mentioned- cell gate. <laughs> You mentioned in the last LGC that people shouldn't leave YouTube comments as they will be missed when I uh, press the bell, which only notifies the first user of the channel who clicks it. You can get around this if you check uh, YouTube.com comments, where you can see all the newest comments on your videos without accidentally missing them. Now you know. Um, Even better with uh, our setup, because we got like all the advanced shit. We, we have a whole thing just called community that we can organize that we yep. straight up don't fucking use because it's YouTube comments. <laughs> but thank you. YouTube comments are basically cancer and the reason I usually click the bell instead of clicking the like user icon is because while that element is loading the bell gets shifted. So I go to click on the little white circle it's like nope I click the notifications. God damn it. Pedro, no. you, ma- you make Pavlov cry. Here's the true story. I mean, Pedro's like, I don't pay. I, I try to keep track of the YouTube comments, uh, but and Pedro's like, I don't really pay. I mean, unless you argue with him. Holy fuck, does he all of a sudden pay attention? If it's, you know, your comments Threads. on my streams, I will I will look at the comments and see if people are asking things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, oh, it doesn't ruin. What, what did you say? Uh, explain smoothly. Yes. <laughs> uh, explain, it's like, ex, ex, define ex, smoothly. Ex, explain, <laughs> explain smoothly is my new jazz album, thank you very much. That's hot. Because it, well, that was on the Neverwinter uh, stream, and that game was lagging like hell the day I tried to stream it. So it's like, okay, define smoothly. <laughs> uh, you know, 23 frames per second, 800 by 6. <laughs> yeah. You know, perfectly acceptable. <laughs> you, you know, st- stuff that you, a resolution you would play uh, Quake 2 RTX on. That's right, baby. Anyway, anyways, uh, we got a new uh, piece of hate mail from Reed. Reed Richards, maybe? I don't know. It says, y'all, since it will be, since it will release in Britain, Canada, and America, period, will any of you heathens be trying Google Stadia? 2019 will be the year of the Linux gaming? Question mark. I mean, well, so we, we, t- we talked about that during the, the t- 10, 12 minutes or so <laughs> we bitched about Stadia. Um... I think I might give it a try just because I got the internet for it. Then I, I, w- I want to see how good that controller actually is. Like I'm to be perfectly honest, that that's like half the reason why I'm gonna get it is. Well, I mean, technically, I've already, I used it in 2018. Scrub. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I'm, I've, I've, I'm, I've missed my opportunity now. I need to throw up my computer. Do it because you don't need the computer yeah, throw for this. It that's up. the whole like, point of Stadia. Pay attention for once. There's the keyboard. <laughs> uh. No, I, I don't, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, you see, I looked at the price of just a controller. If you wanted to get just a controller, it's like 60 pounds. A brand new one of these is 40. See, so... this is my problem. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, because <laughs> uh, admittedly, I was like, uh, controller, maybe the controller doesn't look bad. I mean, who doesn't want an extra controller? Uh, but no. No, that's way too fucking much money for a fucking controller. No. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I want to be part of the games as a service resolution or a revolution where I don't actually. Resolution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 1920 by 1200. Um, One of the things, at, though, at I mean, you, get, you get almost symmetrical gigabit. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess maybe since I'm on cable, I should try it with my fucking half gig connection. Um, Pedro is, you're on something. 
drugs. So he's, on he's, 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 he's on dial-up. <laughs> TC, <laughs> TCP over I'm carrier on, pigeon. I'm on UK fiber. I technically have a no NT in this very living room. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still like 220 down and 15 up. So It's, yeah. it's also a portrait <laughs> of the queen, so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and no uh, Jesus apparitions on it just yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, but you you, you 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 might have some you might have some uh, John Noble apparitions though. <sighs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? On that bomb show, we're gonna accuse him. I just music. gave up. <laughs> you would always find this bullshit uh, somewhere around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's uh, where we do it. We do the thing. We invite you to join this nightmare train when it pulls off the tracks and into your face. It's terrifying. Thank you for doing it. If you want to get a hold of me, just add Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm hanging out there. Um, I'm like at Vin on mass.linuxgamecast.com. I might read it. I mean, I'm there every now and then. I'm Jordan Swung, and I love puns and stupid jokes like that because it's the closest thing I'll ever be able to get to psychically inflicting pain on others. You can find me posting dumb shit at The Burning Fool on Twitter or on our Mastodon at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Frojo, at Frojo. Pedro? The only pain I inflict is when I open my mouth and people are forced to listen to me, which, if ah, you made ears. it this far, kudos. I am Peter Mateos, and if you'd like to perhaps read more of me, you can go to Twitter and look for at unaccounted for. That's F O U R. I'm there. Give me a follow. If you post interesting shit, I'll follow you right back. You see, Jordan, this is why we get the interface show. Man, show. I, I can show you how to set it up where you can just mute him. It'd be brilliant. Yeah. I love it. I no one say, mutes you... Pedro. I'll kick your ass if you do. Ladies and gentlemen, let's roll some credits. Yeah. I was going to say, oh, if you want to read, Pedro, you can just check our YouTube comments. <laughs> just do an entire show where one of us is muted. We've done that. Yep. We, we have the technology. Let's think our bosses, our executive producers, our third and Fox star, empty atomic ass in Kansas, Mike G, Barbara M, drummer seven, alias Hoplo, and Mackie. All right, let's, let's go for it. Jupiter Broadcast. All the producers. Mr. Mango, sir. Uh, Truggy. Kim, I'm Jonas, Trugdills, Ryan, Major. Daniel, Chris, Craig, Steven, David, Tech Mad, Nathan, Jolly. Tanuda. <laughs> Where's the real Brett Pedro Mateus? W. Corey. Ventasa, um, Colsta, Mr. Amish. Basil, Vertnog, Linux Sorceress. Guru, Sorceress, and Vertnog. Oh, look, yeah. all, all, all of Frank's fuck buddies. <laughs> oh, there. Mike, 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 Mike G is our best fuck buddy by a long shot. All the fucks. He gives more fucks than <laughs> <laughs> Behold my fuck The field of wreck I throw my fucks it. For it is grown barren Hopefully the fucks Do not breaketh Or taketh away May all the your fucks, fucks Be positive it. The fucks giveth And the fucks Taketh away The fucks giveth And the fucks Giveth some more Just in case Just in case And he wasn't worried This was gonna be like Remotely civil Or educational There you fucking go Dynify everyone We'll it, see you next week It's it's civil in the Bye. way that the Civil War was civil. <laughs>